you ever heard of the Great Hall of Records, the Book of Life, the Book of Knowledge? Well, if you want to have access to the information from all of your, your ancestors, from all of your past incarnations, you want to work in the Akashic Records. Greetings, my name is Astra Gaia and welcome to my home studio. Today we are going to be unboxing the Akashic Tarot deck. This is a 62 card deck that can help you access your Akashic Records. Different people go about accessing the Akashic Records in various ways. For me, one way is I like to meditate with the intention of certain information that I want to receive. And I will contact my Akashic Records guide uh, for my own records, or if I'm accessing the records of someone else, I contact their Akashic Records guide. Another way that I do is by using a pendulum. And so I have a protocol in advance of the information that I'm looking for and ask yes or no questions to get the information through a pendulum. I have three crystals here that I regularly use to access the Akashic Records. And the first one is blue kyanite. Now look at this beautiful specimen of blue kyanite. This is um, a stone that can help you open your third eye. It can help you to have access to more information from the universe. The second is yellow citrine. And so this yellow citrine we can use to open and balance our solar plexus. The solar plexus is important because that's where your sense of identity is held and you really have to have a strong sense of identity to be able to access the Akashic Records. Um, and thirdly, we have rose quartz. Now rose quartz is a really good crystal for opening up and expanding your heart chakra and you really have to be pure of heart to access the Akashic Records. And I also have brought frankincense. Frankincense is an essential oil that is used in ancient times. And I like to put a little bit of frankincense on my temples and diffuse some into the air. And that really helps me to open up all of my, all of my senses. And that helps me to connect more to the Akashic Records. Now, this is another tool we can use to get information from the records, the Akashic Tarot. And so if you're, if you're good with tarot cards, this may be a preferable. Let's view the back of the box. It says, find the answers you seek, attract your greatest love, uncover mystical histories and unknown futures. So the Akashic Tarot is designed to access the profound energy and unlimited information that make up the Akashic Records, which are great fields of wisdom and power, which the cat has seen, that transcend time and space and are immediately available to all. With each card, you can connect with a powerful force, such as this cat, and open <clears throat> to the psychic currents that are always flowing between you and the Akashic Realm. This deck will help you connect with your spirit guides, such as Stormy, the cat. Hi, Stormy. Hi, Stormy. This deck will help you connect with your spirit guides, ascended masters, angels, and loved ones in spirit. With a turn of a card, you can enter the Akashic world. Now, we may have help from um, Stormy or one of my other five cats. And he may leave behind some fur. But hey, that's part of the fun. All right, we are set up to view our Akashic Tarot deck. And I'm going to begin the unboxing. So I'm going to remove the plastic wrap from this. And let's see what's inside the box. Well, first thing is a booklet. Now this is... The Akashic Tarot Guidebook. And this is by Sharon Ann Klinger and Sandra Ann Taylor. And let's see what's inside here. 
may have listed a table of contents with a major and minor arcana. And so this, their suits are the suit of scrolls, suit of roses, suit of forces, and suit of keys. All right, so this, this is a little bit different than some of the other ones I've seen. So I'm excited to see what is going to be presented in the book. All right, and they define in the book, the Akashic Records, they call it the expansive body of all information, knowledge, inspiration, discovery, and creativity for eternity. All right, so that's very interesting. All right, I'm going to set aside the guidebook and get out the cards. That's the exciting part, right? Let's look at the cards. Whoa. So the edges are not gilded and... Um, they're not shiny. They're very matte. So that's good for the camera. They don't seem to be stuck together at all. Sometimes the decks are a little bit stuck together. What I'm going to do now is go through the cards and I'm going to go into more detail on the major arcana, on the minor arcana. I'm not going to read you anything from the book, but I'm just going to display them out on my board. Um... I think that on the Major Arcana, I'll give you a little bit more information from the book on the upright and reverse meaning. Um, and this book shows has upright, reverse meaning, and shows Akashic Force. So I might go into a little bit on the Akashic Force as well, depending on the card. All right, so the first one is the Oracle of Delphi. And right here, you can see this is the priestess at Delphi. And she sits high up on this three-legged seat. And nearby, there's a robed priest. And he's he has this open scroll. It's like he's going to write on it. All right. And so in this, we see two important keys in psychic experience, perception and interpretation. So when you receive the card... You're in a time of great insight and psychic power, which that sounds like me right now. I am just really rolling along with the Akashic Records. But reversed, this card shows that you've been denying your inner voice in some way, and you may have gotten messages from your spirit that you haven't acknowledged. Now, this is very easy in the modern world where we have so many distractions. You get really thrown off uh, from ever hearing anything from your guides, from spirit, because you have technology going pretty much 24-7. And so if you want to hear more messages, put down your phone. Don't turn off this video, though. <laughs> um, and listen to what your guides are saying. All right, second is the Akashic Library. And some people think of the Akashic Records as a library with books or scrolls. Uh, when I meditate and see the Akashic Records, I see it as tubes with light zooming through it. And those are, um, the, that is, the light represents the data. Uh, basically, the Akashic Records is supposed to be vibrations. So, um the way I see it, the vibrations are represented in the form of light, um, and it could be in the form of sound. Um, and for some people, their guides show it to them as a library with books. So in this card, inside a great library, candles cast a glow upon the books in the tall shelves. And this card can indicate writing or publishing a book. Um, and it can indicate you've moved deeper into the Kashic records to a higher self-awareness. However, reversed the stairway. Can you, let me zoom in a little bit. The stairway here leads downward. And it you you may feel you're in a state of confusion. So it's time to go deeper. And I know for me. I enjoy going deeper into the Akashic Records and deeper into my psychic knowledge. 
I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. This is Archangel Gabriel, card number three. Gabriel is a divine messenger, and um, he he's the archangel of communication. So here he has his trumpet and his scroll and some sparrows. Those are sparrows. And he's bringing sacred words of truth into the world. So... This means you'll have an easier time communicating with others, expressing your feelings. What chakra is linked to that? That's your throat chakra. Um, and then reversed. Maybe you need to work on your throat chakra. Gabriel reversed indicates you may be having a difficult time where communication is concerned. You're not speaking out for yourself. Um, but Gabriel's a powerful force you can call on. Now, on, on the Akashic Force section of this, it says... Feel the Archangel Gabriel step up before you and place his hand upon you. He fills you with a will to express your words. What do you want to share and with whom? So that reminds me of, uh, I do angelic Reiki, and our, our healing angel uh, will come and place their hands on your shoulders and, and deliver healing with you as a conduit. All right, so this is birth. The fourth major arcana is birth. Um, so look at these trees. It says carved upon it is the old Celtic Ogham letter Baith, which represents a birch tree and stands for birth. Interesting. And so this card means it's time for a new start. Could be an actual birth or a metaphorical one. And that could go along with a new moon. If you have a new moon and the birth card, I would see that as a sign. With the card reversed, you may find challenges or delays with a pregnancy or romance. There may also be some difficulties for one of your children or between you and a child. So the book goes on. I'm just giving you a couple of sentences from the book. There's several pages on each one of these in the book. Um, and I'm trying to give you a little bit of flavor on these cards. So the next one is Hilarion. And that doesn't mean hilarious. It's actually very serious. Seen here with spirit and the implements of study and scientific discovery, Hilarion is a powerful ascended master and a wonderful connection to the font of information that the Akashic Records hold. So, he's always available to you, and he can help you go deeper into the Akashic Records to get the knowledge. Now, if he appears reversed in your spread, it's a sign you've lost your focus, and that can happen. Um, when you've lost your focus, or you've become totally illogical about an issue in your life, that never happens to me. <laughs> Um, so you can turn to Hilar to Hilarion for help. Uh, and I might say, if you're, if you've lost your focus, if you can't seem to connect, I, I encourage you to go out into nature and connect with nature first. And when you connect with the elements, connect with the fire of the sun, connect with the water, the air, the wind, the earth, the plants, the trees, and also the phases of the moon. After you do that and get in sync with all of that, you're gonna find it's a lot easier for you to hear messages from spirit and also to connect to things like the Akashic Records. All right, number six, the Divine Physician. The Divine Physician stands before a well, carrying a jug of healing water and sharing his the light of his healing with those nearby. Zoom in and take a look at the healer. This card indicates you're moving into a time of magnificent healing on many levels. And there's a person who can be a great healer for you, as well as a teacher who shares healing gifts you can pass on to others. And now you can find healing in your Akashic Records. There, there may be something from um, a past incarnation or something from earlier in your life that you need to do shadow work and go back and heal. And, and you can do this in the Akashic. Now, reverse, 
you may have lost sight of all that's required for your own self-care. We talk a lot about self-care these days and how important it is to find time for yourself. Since the divine, now this is from the Akashic Force section, since the divine physician, as he steps in front of you and pours the light and energy of perfect healing into you. Very interesting. Okay. I want you all to be healed. Ooh, this is interesting. Look at these people. What's going on in this card? Faded meeting. All right, here we see the clock striking 12. Is this Cinderella? A man and woman approach each other, coming to meet at the time that was predetermined by their higher selves. And you can see up here their higher selves. So with this card, you're coming to an, uh, a very important relationship in your life, either entirely new or it's an existing relationship being lifted to a much higher experience. And karma from past lives may have brought you together. So this is showing that just because you a person is new in your life doesn't mean that you've never met them before. Perhaps in a past incarnation or before you were incarnated, you made some sort of contract or decided to work together to evolve both of you. So reverse, there's a person in your life with whom you had made plans to work on your karma together to undo past life patterns. But it shows one or both of you have fallen into old habits or some sort of denial. You may need to work on a relationship. All right, next, Archangel Raphael. Upright, the Archangel Raphael walks down a path and approaches you, sharing his healing and uplifting light. This is a beautiful card. And look at the light. Look at the light coming from his heart. Look, it's pink like my rose quartz. And in his hand, he has a big ball. What is that? He's a profoundly loving spirit who has an important role in bringing the Akashic power to you. He most often comes in the guise of a human. Blessings abound with this card upright. There may be a renewal of a lost dream, a reuniting of family members, or a healing. Wow, this is a really good card. I would want to get this card. But reversed, it could signify an emotional or physical condition or split in the family that needs to be healed. But you can call on Archangel Raphael for that, for that healing. And the Akashic Force says, Open yourself to the presence and touch of the Archangel Raphael who stands beside you now. So then you can call in your angel. And this is just like in, in angelic Reiki healing when we call in our healing angels and we can call in archangels. And you can call in Archangel Raphael to come and heal you and, and bring you that and to heal others as well. All right, Archangel Michael, another Archangel. Wow, this is a pretty card. Look at the wings. He is a channel of divine power, and he is seen here sharing his energy with two small children, bringing them great strength and support. He can lift up your energy, too. And when you receive this card, know your energy reflects Michael's amazing strength. So if you need strength, this is the card for you. Uh, reversed. It's a sign you need to reconnect to your real power source. And Michael is a channel of divine force. So you can, you can call on uh, Archangel Michael to help you. All right, the light of the world. Whoa, this is interesting. Well, there's a lot going on in this picture. Let's see. This is an old sage right here, and he's holding this glowing lantern. He's knocking on this door. And there's a there's a man inside. Oh, look, he's got a cute cat. Let's zoom in on the kitty. Look at the cat. All right, he's not paying any attention to, to this guy. So it says your divine being is trying to get your attention through your, though your life may be busy, an opportunity now presents itself for you to move to a higher awareness. It's time to open your higher self in all its wisdom and powers. It's up to you to open the door. And reversed. 
Do do do. The cat's upside down. <clears throat> Reversed. Something disruptive in your life may have thrown you off balance, or you've gotten very busy. So understand, as long as you ignore the highest part of who you are, you turn away from the greatest source of your power and joy. And then let me read you the Akashic Force part, or part of that. With a deep breath, you fill yourself with grace and peace and light of your higher self. And your vision opens to a wider universe. You realize you have all the time and power in the world. All right next, we have the Ark of the Covenant. And it looks like inside this tent is the Ark of the Covenant. Wow, exciting. And there's two dudes out here around the fire. So... This can represent a beneficial legal contract or title transfer and show successfully working with professionals like brokers or lawyers. Um, and it means also that your karma does not rule you, you rule it. So if, you, if your karmic directives at this time involve other people, make sure there's no urgency, need, or personal agenda in play. And then reversed, I know this card is a little bit boring. Reversed, if there are legal dealings at issue, this card reversed could show a broken contract or failed legal transfer. Hmm. All right, let's see the scribe. Let me zoom out a little bit. The scribe, he's scribing. All right, there, the scribe is here at the desk and there's some other scribes over here in the background. And it indicates a great upsweep in mind and study for you. If there's any subject with which you'd like to acquaint or reacquaint yourself with, do so. So I am a perpetual student. I'm always wanting to learn new things. That's one reason you get a new deck is you want to learn something new, right? And I hope you can learn a lot in the Akashic Records. Now, um, there may be a teacher or even an entire school that can help you with this upliftment. Reversed, you may be ignoring opportunities for higher learning. Stop holding yourself back. Hmm. That's simple. To learn or not to learn, that is a question. All right, here we got Buddha. Oh, look at his light inside. Let's zoom in on that a little. And all of his followers. Upright, the Buddha sits meditating. The hills in the background are dotted with other people meditating and patiently waiting for him to speak. But he won't move a muscle till he's ready. This shows a time of inner preparation before action. Sometimes it's hard for us to have patience and wait until we're ready. Um, but you're going to know when you're ready. All right. Reversed. Buddha leaves the state of preparation behind him and moves into the crowd. If you feel hesitant and slow to move, don't hold yourself back. So the Akashic Force says, close your eyes to, and reach to the Buddha within. Feel the peace and easy understanding that there is a time to every purpose under heaven. And feel your own sense of purpose stirring softly within you so you're ready to serve. Number 14, Initiation and the Count St. Germain. Look, he is standing among in the he is standing among these pillars in this big temple. And look, there's light coming from him. This card represents your initiation. It's much more than a change or even a transformation. It is nothing less than your movement into higher revelations of power, insight, and achievement. The time is now. And certainly. If you are able to access the Kashyap records, that does show that you are moved. You have moved to a higher level in your involvement. Reversed, the time of your initiation has been upon you, but you're holding on to old ways and resistant to the wonderful changes at hand. So, if you close your eyes and have Saint Germain beside you. You can let go of those things and, and feel your energy and re re receptivity heightened. Moving on to the muse, card number 15. The muse plays a song, la 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 la, of upliftment and imagination. 
the petals of inspiration drift upon the wind, filling the air with light and creativity. And this card shows a time of very heightened resourcefulness and inventiveness for you. So it's time to do a creative project. But if it's reversed, you may have been trying to give birth to a creative project and having issues with that. You have a writer's block. So if you close your eyes and touch in with a force of inspiration and pure potential, you can give birth to any possibility. This card is called Caught in the Ruins. And these two people are in the ruins of a medieval castle in a prison. It shows a dark or difficult situation that seems to have you trapped. Even if these limiting situations and actions are strong, they're self-imposing. And the courage and strength required to change lie within you. However, reversed, what does it mean reversed? A horrible, dark, or confining situation is coming to an end. Well, that doesn't sound bad. You've discovered you can break free from self-imposed limits. Be sure to stay the course. Now, with your Akashic Force, think of one thing in your life that holds you back and sabotages your success and joy, it makes it feel like a dark prison, and fill yourself with love and self-honoring, and then you'll be able to take the next step to freedom. All right, card 17 is called The Lookout, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see. There's a man up here with binoculars, and he's in the crow's nest of this big ship, and there's a battle on the deck below. Look, there's all this fire. Doesn't look good. It means there's a challenging situation, perhaps even a battle of sorts around you, and you could experience a sudden fall or loss of your position. But if you're aware, you can make a backup plan that will help you ride through this difficult time more easily. Now, if it's in the reverse position, the lookout may seem to have fallen and lost his position, but now he's free from the heat of battle. So whether you receive this card upright or reversed, there's a card nearby that can help you better understand the difficulties at hand and the steps you can take to leave or resolve them. So that's a special note to this card. It, it means use another card with it. That's interesting. All right, let's go to card 18 up in the air. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit on this. All right, so this man and woman are looking up at this hot air balloon. Have you ever been in a hot air balloon? I have not. Seems a little bit risky for me. But um, I imagine it's a quiet and beautiful ride, as long as you stay afloat. <laughs> and this card means during this time of your life, there are aspects of an important situation that seem hidden to you. You may feel a strong, almost urgent desire to know how it's going to turn out. And if you connect with Akashic Records and ask for insight, uh, there, there are elements that are unknown at this time. And... There's too much about the situation that's up in the air. So the Akashic Records isn't necessarily um, like a, a divination tool where you can see the future, right? Because if something's going to happen in the future, well, there's a lot of choices to be made until then. And, and the future may not be predictable until you get closer to it. And maybe, maybe even then, there are too many variables. So... It says, trust is the only way for you for now. And then reversed, a situation that has been up in the air has come down to earth. Oh, that sounds like a good card. Now you can understand the situation more fully and act on it. All right, so I'm running out of space up top. Reflection number 19. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right. On this one, you see the beautiful full moon shining over a quiet lake as a ship glides gently through the water. And the glow of the ship's lantern is reflected on the lake's surface. This card can sometimes show a trip, particularly a trip over by water. But more importantly, it reveals you now have a direct line to your psychic gifts. 
Now, in your Akashic Records, you can find out what your spiritual gifts really are. And if you are in alignment with your spiritual gifts, with your divine soul blueprint, including your, your soul group of origination, then you will be leading a more abundant life. I know I've said that before. Now, reversed, this card can indicate canceled or change trip. Um, but deeper than that, it says water, the symbol of your emotional energy, is now on top. And it washes over you, blocking your reflective experience and disrupting your life's journey. So don't get bogged down in those emotions. Um, so you may need to do some, some work on yourself to overcome that. All right. Number 20. And I believe there, there's 22 major arcana we're going over. Will, wisdom, and mind. Ooh, this is lovely. Upright, a gold crown of power and authority rests above a Celtic trinity knot. On either side of the knot are the alchemical symbols for fire and water. Below is the ancient three-legged symbol of the coat of arms from the Isle of Man. This card brings with it an a time of enormous power, balance, and expression. I'll take one of those. The first three rays, or the energies of the divine, move within you equally. Power and will, love and wisdom, and intellect or mind. You're working intimately with the ascended masters who are linked to these energies. Yes, very nice. Reversed. At this time, your authority may be diminished, and there may even be a loss of position. So, what you want to do is, in your Akashic Force, um, know that the power, heart, and mind of God dwell within you. So, close your eyes and feel these divine forces. Let your energy grow, your heart overflow with love, and your mind be as boundless as the sky. Part 21, Uriel and the Sphinx. Archangel Uriel stands before a Sphinx. Look at that, it's beautiful. And I've been to Egypt and seen the Sphinx, and it's, it's so amazing. So they're, they're under a full moon. There's the moon. And the Sphinx is, is uh, shown with the body of a lion. Um, but more than this, the Sphinx represents the enigmatic and inscrutable the silent holder of truth and ancient mysteries of the world. And you may have noticed I have a lot of backdrop from ancient Egypt um, because I connect with um, ancient Egypt through a number of ways. This card shows it's time for you to do the most important and probably the most difficult Work in your life. The digging and inner discovery that takes you to your deepest self and deepest power. Reversed, the sands of the desert have covered you once again. Oh no. Not only have you put aside the in deep inner work that brings to light your self-discovery, but you've allowed even the mundane little things of life settle upon you and keep you from your spiritual power. Stop that. It doesn't say stop that, but I'm saying stop that. <laughs> All right. So 22 is our last major arcana, and it's add some. A candle casts light on an open book held by a young woman sitting at a desk. Let's take a closer look at her. Well, there's a lot going on in this picture. She's surrounded by several people, many of whom are somewhat translucent and glowing. An angel bends and whispers, Adsum, I arrived. I am here. I attend you. Adsum is a single word that has many, many meanings. First, it affirms your own strength and focus in the present. You can use it as a command. Whenever you find yourself direct, distracted from what's at hand, say, Adsum, I am here, and feel yourself present. The word also declares your arrival at your goals and all your wishes coming true. Say, Adsum, I arrived and see yourself reaching your goals. This card reminds you to be assured that no matter what's happening in your life, spirit's always there for you. And reversed. Do, 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 do. Let me zoom out a little. 
For first, the card shows you may feel you've lost sight of your purpose in contact with your friends, higher self, and the spirits who attend you. Maybe you're too emotional or stressed or just busy. Say, add some. Remind yourself that you're here for a reason. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing add some correctly for you. All right, in this deck, there are 22 cards in the Major Arcana and 40 in the Minor Arcana. And the levels of meaning in the Major Arcana will be sensed more deeply as you work with them. Um, but there's like references to spirit, the inner soul, the higher self, and divine source. So this is the essence of being. But the minor arcana, which we're about to go over, speak to events, feelings, activities, and relationships in the personal world. And they cover situations from the home, from renovations, moving, buying new furniture, kids going off to college, to relationships, uh, indicating romance, separation, divorce, and pregnancy. And they can relate to business matters like partnerships, marketing, difficult bosses, and coworkers. So this, there's four suits, um, scrolls, roses, forces, and keys. And this is the first suit, the, the scrolls. So let me zoom in here for you. The first scroll is on track. Second is two worlds. Third, setting your course. Fourth, the karmic trench. Fifth is diversity. And then on the bottom here, we have the sands of time, intricacies in industry, paths unknown, the queen of scrolls, and the king of scrolls. So this is beautiful artwork on these. And so the, the, theme, the color theme for this uh, suit is green. Here we have the suit of roses, and I'm gonna zoom in for you so you can take a look at these. These are really pretty. The color theme is red, of course, for roses. The first one is commitment, winged messengers. The third is loving elementals. Oh, I love that. Look at that, the little fairies with the baby. Um, then we have views of the ego, the garden, and at the bottom we have War of the Roses, The Journey, Sangha Community, The Queen of Roses, and The King of Roses. Here I am showing you the next suit, Forces, and the color theme is blue. Let's take a look here. The Akashic Field is the first one, the second one, the Willow, the Bird's Nest, Spring and Autumn, Summer and Winter, so those are the seasons. Then we come down to the Waterfall, Balance, the Lightning Bolt, the Queen of Forces, and the King of Forces. So these are all types of forces. Very interesting. Very beautiful artwork on these. Finally, we have the suit of keys, and the color theme is purple. I'm gonna zoom in for, so you can see these a little bit better. We have, the first one is the architect, and that could refer to the soul blueprinter. Secondly, the treasure, the chess game, clearing the way, and wishes fulfilled. And at the bottom, in Crescent Moon, The Ascent, The Master Artisan, and then we have The King and Queen of Keys. So a lot of detail, a lot of things going on in these. Thank you for joining me on our journey today through the Akashic Tarot deck. And I hope you'll join me next time when we'll unveil a different deck. Good luck on your journeys in the Akashic Records, and I hope you find all the knowledge that you seek. Namaste.